Hello, everyone. My name is Paul Mitchell. I'm a PhD student working under Laurel Carney at the University of Rochester. And I'm here to talk about our computational model of fast spectrotemporal chirp sensitivity in the inferior colliculus. So our lab deals with the inferior colliculus, or IC, uh, the primary nucleus of the auditory midbrain. The IC receives diverse input from most brainstem nuclei, as well as descending efferent input. And these diverse inputs make the IC sensitive to a range of complex sound features, including pitch, binaural cues, amplitude modulation, or AM, and frequency modulation, or FM. This is particularly interesting for speech coding. As you can see, if you zoom in on the spectrogram for the E vowel, uh, speech is rich with these complex features, including fast FM. So this is relevant because uh, recent recordings suggest that IC neurons are highly sensitive to the direction and velocity of fast FM chirps. In our lab, we make recordings, uh, extracellular recordings of rabbit ICC neurons responding to different sound stimuli. And one of these stimuli um, are the Schroeder harmonic complexes. So Schroeder stimuli are unique harmonic complexes with flat magnitude spectra and a specific phase spectrum such that uh, there is a linear frequency chirp that goes from the highest harmonic um, to the fundamental or vice versa, all contained within a pitch period. That makes these chirps much faster than slower chirps that are more commonly studied, such as formant transitions. Uh, flipping the phase function uh, changes the chirp direction and changing the fundamental results in a change of chirp velocity. So rabbit neurons are sensitive and often selective for chirp direction and velocity. The dot rasters in the bottom uh, show responses from two separate uh, neurons, where the x-axis here is time. Uh, the y-axis within a row are uh, differing repetitions of the same stimulus, and the different rows are different directions of Schroeder chirp. So neuron one here is selective for the negative direction of Schroeder chirp, where neuron two is selective for the positive direction. This selectivity is even more striking if you consider that differing directions of Schroeder chirp are simply time reversed versions of one another. So what we've observed the sensitivity to fast chirps in uh, rabbits and gerbils, which suggests that this may be a property of the general mammalian IC that may extend to humans as well. So we know that chirps and especially vowels contain uh, lots of these, sorry, we know that speech and especially vowels contain lots of chirping features that these neurons may be equally sensitive to. So the question we want to ask is, how does this novel chirp sensitivity factor into speech coding in the IC? So to answer this question, we need a model. So our modeling strategy uh, goes back to some foundational work done by Siebert in the 1960s, who was the first to represent auditory nerve rates as non-homogeneous Poisson processes. Uh, this importantly allows the estimation of psychophysical thresholds. Later, Cripson first, extended these calculations to brainstem nuclei and showed that you could treat the IC neuron as a coincidence detector of multiple excitatory and inhibitory inputs. And as long as those inputs were all non-homogeneous Poisson processes, your output would also be a non-homogeneous Poisson process. So using the strategy, but in the IC, we can propose models with many different configurations of excitatory and inhibitory inputs from multiple frequencies. So to explain why that multi-frequency aspect is so important, we need to examine some of the proposed mechanisms for chirp selectivity in the IC. So the most common mechanism is rooted in a, an asymmetrical inhibition across frequency. So in this figure, you can see that conceptually, if you have an inhibitory side region and a frequency sweep, a sweep in one direction would result in a staggered excitation inhibition and a spike whereas a sweep in the other direction would result in a coinciding excitation inhibition and no spike. This asymmetry could be achieved uh, with flanking inhibitions, um, which are stronger on one side, or flanking inhibitions, which vary in relative timing to the excitation. Another interesting mechanism uh, which could uh, be used is um, the cochlear traveling wave latency, where lower frequencies arrive at the IC later than higher frequencies. You can imagine a cell that responds when there is a sweep um, that results in a multi-frequency in multi-frequency inputs lining up and compensating for this latency and not responding otherwise. So based on these proposed mechanisms, our model takes input from three frequencies, a uh, excitatory center frequency and two flanking inhibitory frequencies. 
So I'm going to walk through the model in detail now. Um, we utilize rate inputs uh, from the Jelani et al. 2014 auditory nerve model. The IC stage of the model has many adjustable parameters, um, which are the excitatory frequency, the two inhibitory frequencies, one low and one high, um, the strength constants for the low and the high inhibitions, inhibitory delays um, relative to the excitation. Uh, this can be negative, meaning that it arrives before the excitation. And lastly, a coincidence detection time window delta. Uh, so we perform parameter optimization using real IC neuron recordings as the example data, um, and where the objective function is the uh, mean squared error of the average rate responses uh, between the example data and the model. Uh, so this model configuration allows us to fit uh, parameters to many kinds of chirp sensitivity that we observe in physiology. Um, and it's also intended to preserve known IC properties such as frequency response maps um, and AM tuning, modulation transfer functions. So I'm gonna show some preliminary results. Um, so using this model, we can propose mechanisms for chirp sensitivity. On the left, you can see more dot rasters. Um, this is a neuron that is selected for negative Schroeder, um, but it turns off at uh, higher velocities. Uh, so using this neuron as example data, the model can guess at what some of these parameters would be and different iterations uh, will result in differing guesses. So you can see bolded here, um, some of these model parameters are very different between uh, uh, these two final model responses, um, but they result in pretty similar um, sensitivities. Um, some iterations will be better at doing some aspects of the physiology than others. For instance, uh, this iteration here uh, retains the ghost of a response at the uh, 50 hertz positive Schroeder um, condition, whereas um, the other one is better at turning off at these higher um, velocities. So we can simulate uh, cells which are selected to positive Schroeder chirps as well. Here we see a neuron that is selected to positive Schroeder chirps at lower fundamentals, but then at higher fundamentals, it just sort of responds to everything. Um, so the model seems to be able to mimic the selectivity fairly well at lower uh, velocities, but isn't very good at capturing the higher uh, f knots where the cell just responds equally well. Uh, this is a work in progress, and uh, we need to continue to explore the parameter space and uh, possibly add new inputs to the model, just explore different model configurations. Uh, ultimately, we want a model that can accurately match all of the given neurons' responses to various stimuli. When we record in the rabbit, we present a wide variety of characterizing stimuli. So we want the model to reproduce the same frequency response maps and modulation transfer functions that we see in the physiology. So looking at the model's best guess for some of these responses, um, we have the actual neural response and the model's output. Um, you can see some of the key features are there. For instance, uh, the response map has the same characteristic frequency. Uh, the modulation transfer functions have the same best modulation frequency, but uh, work remains uh, to be done. For instance, you can see that the uh, um, spontaneous rates don't match. There is an issue with the modulation transfer functions where the model wants to just suppress everything at higher levels. Um, this is a work in progress. So where would we like the direction of this model to go? Uh, ultimately, like I mentioned before, we want to be able to fit the model to multiple stimulus types, but also simultaneous stimulus types. So this includes Schroeder chirps, response maps, modulation transfer functions, additional stimuli that we do present in the physiology. Um, to do that, we will likely need to introduce additional complexities or stages to the model, just continue to explore the parameter space. And finally, we really want to ask the question, is chirp sensitivity critical to IC speech responses? This will involve assessing the ability of our chirp model to replicate IC neuron vowel responses and comparing these results to a model without chirp sensitivity. So thank you for your time, and I'd be happy to take any questions now.